Uh, so let's start with the uh, lesson today. Today is uh, July 10th, 2022. And uh, we're going to be studying the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 7, verses from 19 to 28. So let's start uh, the lesson with a uh, word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to be here one more time to study your word, to scrutinize your word, to uh, read your word, and to share your word with people that uh, are eager to uh, know the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability, giving the strength, the wisdom necessary to do this every Sunday. Let it, this be a blessing to the people that uh, are going to be here and the people who are uh, watching on tape. And dear Lord, thank you for everything that you do for us and giving us the wisdom and the strength necessary uh, so we can uh, share the word of God with uh, other people. Uh, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're going to be starting, a con uh, it's going to be a continuation of the last uh, lesson. The last lesson was the Daniel dream of four beasts and uh, what that represent. And uh, so he was uh, looking at those four beasts and then he had a vision a vision of the ancient of days, a vision of the angels, a vision of uh, things of the end times that he could not comprehend. So he, uh, he uh, asked one of the angels, what does this represent? And, uh, and one of the angels said, uh, well, this represents the following. The four great beasts are four kings that will rise on the earth. And he says in verse 18, but the holy people of the most high will receive the kingdom and will possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. So let's continue with verse 19 to 28. And uh, Daniel said, Then I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the others and most terrifying, with its iron teeth and bronze claws. The beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the ten horns on its head and about the other horn that came up, before which three of them fell the horn that looked more imposing than the others, and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them, until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth, who will be different from all the other kingdoms, and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the early ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change and set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times, and half a time. But the court will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Okay. So let's start analyzing the first, the first verse, verse 19. What well, he says, uh, he already, Daniel already know about the uh, other three beasts, but he was more interested in the four beast. So he says, then I wanted to know the meaning of the four beast, which was different from all the others, a most terrifying, which is iron teeth and bronze claws, the beast that crush and devour its victims and trample underfoot whatever was left. <clears throat> this, <clears throat> this beast is so remarkable, so fierce and terrific, and terrifying too. The number of the horns was so great, the springing up of the little horn was so surprising, the character of the horn was so unusual. All these things were so fearful and so uncommon a character that Daniel was deeply affected and sought earnestly for a further explanation. This beast, you know, the previous three beasts, one was like a bear, a lion, and a leopard. These four beasts didn't, uh, it was not similar to any animal on earth. 
it was like a combination of the other three beasts. And it says, and his fearful appearance with his iron teeth and bronze claws denotes the fearful and terrific character of the kingdom, symbolized by the beast. Then in verse 20, it says, I also wanted to know about the ten horns on his head and about the other horn that came up before which these three of them fell, the horn that looked more imposing than the others and that had eyes and the mouth that spoke boastfully. So out of ten, ten horns comes uh, a little horn that start growing slowly and that growing so much that takes over the other horns and that not only take over but dominates completely the whole environment and it speaks, uh, you know, boastfully, speaks uh, heresy against, uh, against uh, the Holy One of God. So Daniel wanted to know the truth about the ten horns or the meaning of them and what they signify and who they pointed out. Then it was about the other horn that came up. This is described as the little horn. And to understand this, we must suppose that the seer or the prophet watched this as it grew until it became the largest of the number. Three horns fell before it. And this little horn grew in size of all the others until it became the most prominent. And that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully, and also claiming an authority over them, as being universal or with an overall power, setting up himself above all that is called God, emperors and kings, taking to himself all power in heaven and in earth, a power to depose kings and absolve their subjects for allegiance to them and even over the conscience of men. So this demeanor is more bold or bolder and impudent than others, as well as fiercer and terrible, threatening kings and kingdoms with bulls, anathemas, and interdicts, or whose appearance is more imposing than the others, in pomp and splendor, making a greater show than the kings of the earth and claiming superiority over them. Let's go to verse 21. Nico, verse okay. 21. Right. Um, as I watched, as I watched, this horn was working war, a waging war against the holy people and defeating them. Yeah, the holy people here is to be understood to be the servants of Christ, you know, the saints. So this horn, which is the Antichrist in Revelation, is described as making war with the saints. You know, when we read this uh, chapter, we see that Daniel has seen kingdoms of the present or the immediate future and the far future. Mm -hmm. The far future matches the book of Revelation. Okay? So it's describing Babylonia, where he was, then it was the Medes and Persians, then it was the Greeks, and then it was the Romans. Mm -hmm. But the Roman Empire, even though it was defeated, it, it stayed dormant until the end, when it was a, a derivative of the Roman Empire, which is 10 kings, which people say maybe the European mm -hmm. Union that will reveal. Mm -hmm. And throughout, this for this is very much like a, a lot of commentators said at the Rome, you know, <laughs> and, and the Pope uh, in Rome that uh, made wars against the saints. In the beginning, everybody that read the Bible was condemned to death. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible was only uh, should be read by uh, the priest, and they would tell you what to do. What they want to tell right. You. So suppose you tell me, I'm not going to read the Bible. I'm going to read the Bible, and I tell you what the Bible says. So you be dependent on me for everything. I can tell you anything. And human nature, as it is, can take advantage of anybody. Mm -hmm. you know? One of the adventures was a confession. Confession is not biblical. You know, you know uh, they took that from the Babylonians. So that's one way to keep uh, power over them. So the priests at the church knew all the secrets about you, mm -hmm. but you know nothing about them. Right. So that's why one way to keep power. And that was through the ages. Okay? So... The holy people here to be to the servants of Christ. So this horn, which is Antichrist, is described as making war with the saints and overcoming them for a time. This, of course, started with the Roman emperors, who were most cruel against the Church of God, both the Jews and Gentiles, but also continued with the spirit of the Antichrist, represented by the power of Rome, and his wars against true believers. That was a persecution, whom they slew in great numbers and was victorious, same as the beast in Revelation 11:7. Verse 22, uh, James. Until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. Okay, so we're talking about this uh, 
Roman power represented by the four beasts, represented by the uh, probably the Vatican, exercised power for 1,500 years. <coughs> I mean, it had absolute power mm -hmm. over all kings because all the kings were subject to the, to the Pope. Right. And it was only until the uh, Reformation, which came in the 1500s, that the Martin Luther came about. Mm -hmm. And then he started changing things. And of course, it was the Counter-Reformation. And then, of course, the, uh, the power of the Pope was diminished as the things went on, mm -hmm. okay? Until the 1800s. And even now, in the 1900s, you know, it still doesn't have the power that he used, he used to have. But the, the councils that they wrote are the same. They have not changed. So if they did have the power, they would exercise that. But uh, Vatican I came later, right? Yeah, sure. Much later. But, uh, but their doctrine has not changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, they still, yeah. they still is anti-biblical. They still right. forgive saints, which have no authority mm -hmm. to do that. Saints, uh, mm -hmm. You know, all these things. And uh, they, they claim that uh, the saints, quote unquote, are intermediaries. They have no biblical backing whatsoever. Yeah. And uh, people are grew up in that system, and that's fine, you know? I mean, it, it's good that uh, they respect that, but uh, we're talking about from the point, point of a uh, biblic Bible, biblical mm -hmm. thing. Biblical uh, passages do not talk about that at all, okay? And that's what we believe. Did say somewhere, like, uh, confess your sin to one another? A what? Yeah. And I think that's yeah. What I confess to you, and you confess to me. Yeah. So it's two-way street. Um, yeah. Right. Right. Because they don't. They don't. No. Tell no. Yeah. It's two-way street, and that's voluntarily. Yeah. It's not a, a mandate. For example, if I have a problem, I can go to James and say, "Listen, I got this problem." He might say, "I can relate to that because I used to have that problem." So that's talking. That's confessing one another and we can help each other. But it's not that I'm in authority, right. and you are here. You confess to me, and I. Forgive you sins. It's not like that. It's not biblical. It was never biblical. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, okay. So, so we read the ancient days. So the ancient days, you know, ancient days is of course God. He right. he being the omnipresent God in a providential way, will check and put a stop to the power and dominance of the little horn over the saints. For this is the termination or end of that. For when the ancient of days comes in the exertion of his power and providence, he will come and sit as a judge upon this little horn or antichrist and judge and condemn and punish it and pronounce judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High. The ancient of days comes to vindicate their cause, to crush the idolaters and to extirpate the dominion of the antichrist or until the final judgment when the saints as successors of the Christ shall be seated on thrones and reign as kings and priests with God and Christ and possess the kingdom forever. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. This would not occur immediately, but at some subsequent period, the ancient of days will come and will set up a kingdom of the earth, or will make over, or will you know, transfer the, the kingdom over to the saints. The holy people of God will rule the earth, will make and administer the laws so that the principles of religion prevail, influencing the hearts of all men and causing righteousness and justice to be done. There will be a universal prevalence of true religion in controlling the hearts and lives of all peoples and disposing them to do what in all circumstances ought to be done. Okay. Let's go to verse 23. Okay, Daniel's vision reveals the hostility waged by the little horn against the saints. The little horn's militaristic character is seen also in 11, 38, and 39, and particularly in Revelation 13, 1 to 10. There in the guise of the beast, this blasphemous enemy of the saints prevailed for 42 months. The connection between Daniel's little horn and John's beast from the sea is unmistakable. Of course, you know, and this is, a, you cannot get away from the power of Rome. Yeah, well, here, sea means people, right? Masses, not water. 
beast yeah, beast of the, the sea. sea. Yeah. Yeah, it comes from the people. Well, it comes from the earth. Yeah. yeah. In previous chapter, it says four beasts came from the sea. Yeah. Then it can come from the earth. The sea represents everybody. Like right, a, that's what I mean. Not from the, the world. world. Not the oceans. Not the ocean, it's not the, yes, it's the world. And sea. Right. right. Yes. And then he said, and we'll devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. <laughs> not only the, the land of Judea, but as some might read and interpret it, but the whole world, which the Romans become masters of. And the phrases used denote the destruction and desolation they made. Whatever they carry their arms and the cruelty of the, and tyranny they exercise, and the vast profusion of blood made by them, both among the heathens they subdue and the Christian they persecuted. Verse 24, uh, James. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from the, this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. So the, uh, the idea is that uh, eventually in Europe, there will be ten kings. Some people say, well, the European Union might be something like that. Out of that will be ten kings or ten rulers. But out of those ten, there was another ruler will become up which in Revelation is like, like a, the Antichrist, the false prophet, or whatever, Satan himself. you know? Satan himself. Mm -hmm. Satan is behind all that. And then uh, he will rule and he will take over, okay? And become really the master of everything. And, every, and the, that's the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And everybody will, uh, well, the, the idea is this, which is very, uh, it's simple to understand, but sometimes difficult to, to, uh, to set it in our minds. The next event, in our, in our church calendar is a rapture, okay? Mm -hmm. That can happen tonight or tomorrow, or happen any time, yeah. well, a thousand years from now, okay? <coughs> we, we are living in the last days, mm -hmm. but we've been living in the last days for the last 2,000 years, mm -hmm. okay? So sometimes when preachers say we live in the last day, that gives the impression that uh, we're living in the last six months. That's not it, no. not it, it's well, an it's expression. It's different in heaven uh, as it is here. That's the yeah. And then after the the rapture, all the Christians and the Holy Spirit are going to be taken away from this earth. So who's going to be left? Mm -hmm. Unbelievers. Right. The church is no longer here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So only unbelievers are going to be. So that they're going to be vulnerable to the rise of the Antichrist. Only then the Antichrist will rise. Only right. then the Antichrist will make himself known. Mm -hmm. And he probably come up with some idea like a. Uh, the well, they're going to say uh, aliens came and took all these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for you to be protected, you're going to have to wear a mark or whatever, mm -hmm. or be identified. And you're going to get a mark of the beast. Could it be uh, something? In front? Could it be a chip? Without that chip, I'm something chip. you can never, right, now we have, you can never buy anything. You or cannot go to the market and buy. But you go to market, you put there, chip, you can buy. But if, mm -hmm. if you don't have a mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy. So it's going to be hard to be a Christian mm -hmm. there, or to, but it's going to be possible. And if you are uh, convert yourself to Christianity then, or accept the Lord, which is possible, you're going to be executed if you are found out. Okay? So that's going to happen too. Okay? But uh, it says here, uh, that's going to happen for uh, seven years. The first three and a half years, there's going to be peace, right. and uh, everybody's going to love the guy, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you're going to make peace with Israel. So everybody's going to say, then after the three and a half years, the last three and a half years, so the seven year tribulation, he's going to reveal himself. Mm -hmm. He's going to be, he's going to place himself in Jerusalem. He's going to be like God, and he's going to demand that everybody will uh, worship him. He's going to persecute the Jews and everything. He's going to reveal his true colors. But then the ancient of days will come in at the end of that and put order. And that's what we're talking about now here. Right. Okay? Which matches the book of Revelation. So it's important that we remember this when we read the book of Revelation. All right? So you see a. Huh? Okay, is a woman? No. He, he says that uh, he will be a man, a man, but he'll have no interest in women. Doesn't mm -hmm. say he's homosexual, no. He's just indifferent to women. Right. Okay? So he's not going to be dominated by a woman. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of. That does it say that? No, not to say he's not here. Oh. I'm saying that because other commentaries that I read uh -huh. that he is indifferent to women. Okay? So women cannot exercise power over him. Mm -hmm. He's immune to that. So it make him even more powerful like that, you know? Uh, so, 
So you just read 24, right? Yes. Okay. So that this total demolition is a policy of the 10 kings. And not only of the 11. This empire as a, as a whole is destructive. The 10 kings seem to rule simultaneously, each with its own territory. And another shall arise after them, an usurper, who shall be different from the former ones whose territory is gained at the expense of the three kings. This king will subdue the others. There is dissension within the empire. The common interpretation is that to the 10 kings who shall arise from this kingdom, is that the four beasts is a revived Roman Empire, and the ki ten kings are members of a future realm, like a European Union. The final form of the Roman world power will be a confederation of ten nations, who will arrive simultaneously in the tribulation days. That we read in the book. So the little horn, coming out of the ten horn, of the four beasts, which is the Antichrist, will march to power by subduing three of the ten nations. We blaspheme God will try in some way to change times and laws in order to promote his anti-Christian program. I will persecute God's saints for the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Okay? So, going to verse 25. Okay, first of all, he will speak against the Most High. He will blaspheme God, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that is, he will blaspheme God, making wicked decrees and proclamations against God's word, and send throughout all the dominion trying to destroy all believers. He will also see himself as a rival, unequal with God, taking the names and characters of holiness, infalli infallibility, deity itself unto him, claiming a power to forgive sin, which is distinctive of God and preferring his own laws, doctrines, and traditions to the world of God. So he makes himself equal to God, right. and do things like a, only a God can do. And will oppress his holy people. He will persecute the saints by his wars with them, and murders and massacres of them, but taking away their lives and their substance. So lessening their numbers and weakening their strength and power. Wear them out as a garment is wore out. Utterly consume and destroy them of which will be the case when the witnesses will be slain. Okay, there's gonna be a two witness during, also we're gonna see in Revelation, that is gonna, they're gonna preach the word of God during the Revelation period. People say these two witnesses are Elijah and Moses and Enoch. Enoch, I thought Moses. No, because there are two that were taken away, right? who did not die. Away, right? Two people who did not die in the Bible, Enoch and, uh, Elijah. and Elijah. Okay? Some commentators said that these are the two people mm -hmm. that are going to be preaching. But the beast is going to kill them. And they're going to be laying for three days. On, the, on the street for three days. But then after the three days, they're going to be resurrected by the power of God. And, and to people God. are going to be amazed. Okay? It oh. says here. And try to change the set times and the laws. He will alter the forms and constitution of the kingdom, like the Pope said. And the customs and such as them, in order to set up and pull down kingdoms of pressure. So when you are in the in the power of the Vatican, when I grew up in the Catholic Church, we would have a lot of processions carrying icons. That's not biblical, okay? But they they institute new things mm -hmm. that really take away from the Word of God, because he's telling they telling you you don't have to read the Word of God, just do what we do, and people do. I grew up in a country yeah. where they do that, mm -hmm. you know, they just follow what the church right. tells them to do, and Question. they yeah. I'm sorry. These Christians that are left behind, who are they? Were they? How come they didn't make it? Well, what are we doing there? Oh. So we go back. He said, um, when we're taking one rapture, right? Yeah. The people left the during the, during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. It's going to be also converts. Yeah. But like I said before, right. it's not going to be easy. Okay. Place, right? If they are right. discovered and don't have the mark of the beast, they're going to be executed. Right. So they're going to be saints. Okay. They're going to be during the tribulation. Right. And he's going to speak that in the book of Revelation too. Okay? So if that's possible. Then he will be against all institutions, whether of divine or human authority, creating a general spirit of lawlessness and unbelief. He will install a new set of religious festivals, sounds familiar, a new morality. The outcome will be the subject, subjugation of God's people. Then the holy people will deliver into his hands. It appears that the, the little horn, the antichrist of the last days, of the beast, will be successful 
for a time in his blasphemies and persecutions, but in the end he'll be destroyed. And he says for a time, times, and half a time. Time refers to a year. Times to two years, and half a time to one half of a year. For a total of three and a half years, which is the same as 1,260 days or 42 months. Some suggest that the expression does not indicate a specific number of years, but instead a period of time that God in his mercy will shorten. The numbers of Daniel and John in Revelation seem to agree. Daniel was certainly prophetical in these things, and his prophecy reached to the end of times, even of Antichrist reign. We can say that Antiochus, Antiochus was during the period of, uh, of the Maccabees, mm -hmm. might be a type of forerunner of the Antichrist. He did many things against the Jewish church with craft, cruelty, and blasphemy. But he was no part of the fourth beast, but the third beast. <coughs> Whereas Daniel here appoints mainly the Roman Empire as part of the fourth beast. So the Ant Antiochus Epiphanes is part of the third beast. Verse 26. But the four will sit, and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Okay, here comes God, the ancient of David, with the court. As in Daniel 7.10, the court shall sit. The judge shall take the bench, and all things will be prepared for the raiment, trial, condemnation, and punishment, for the little horn of Antichrist. When the above time is up, God the Father, the Ancient of Days, and Christ, said to be like the Son of Man, brought near to him, shall sit as judges, and then as holy angels. Antichrist is going to be destroyed, suddenly by Christ at his coming. The fully developed man of sin, a false prophet, making a last desperate effort in confederacy with the beast or secular power of the Roman Empire will be destroyed and the authority will never be revived. The dominion of the little horn will come to a violent end when he submits to the court of God. Verse 27, Nico. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of our kingdoms and their heaven will be handed over, uh, handed over to the holy people of the most high. His kingdom will be an everlasting Okay, not only the dominion that shall be taken away from the little horn or Antichrist, but dominion for all others throughout all the earth and under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of God and the true professors of faith in Christ. Professors of faith in Christ. The spiritual reign of Christ, which will take place, is in a more glorious manner at the destruction of the Antichrist, will continue until the millennium, or when the personal reign of Christ begins. And after that will be the ultimate glory, in which Christ and his people will reign to all eternity. Verse 28, uh, James. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts. My face turned pale, and I kept the matter to myself. Okay, so Daniel said this is the end of the matter. The end of the angel's words and interpretation of those things Daniel was so eager of being informed about and the whole dream and vision Daniel had. And indeed, this is the end of the manifestation of all future events. The kingdom and glory of Christ with his people. And he says, I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts. When he thought of these powerful monarchies, their strength and cruelty, and what the people of God will suffer under them, and especially under the four beasts of monarchy, and especially under the little horn of Antichrist, my face, my face turned pale. Daniel looked sorrowful and dejected because of the afflictions of God's people. To the conclusion of them, one would have thought would have inspired him with joy and pleasure, because at the end, God is victorious. But I kept the matter to myself. Daniel kept this matter in his heart, storing it in his memory, pondering it in his mind, meditate upon it, and very well aware of the several things he observed, becoming thoroughly knowledgeable of them, and making them known to others, and leading them in writing for the benefit of the church of God in future ages. Like, that's us. The conclusion marks not only the end of the angel's interpretation, but also the account of the whole incident. So that concludes chapter seven. Oh, I'm tired already. And it's just a tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I know. Any questions about the lesson? Yeah, um, so this uh, Daniel's book is from the Old Testament, and uh, so the Jews, They didn't. They didn't Just it. a mystery to them. 
is only interpreted when we read the book of Revelation, but the Jews do not believe in the New Testament. So for them, with the book of Daniel, the, you know, it's the end of the, uh, of the end. it just stays there. It's to be explained later. It's like God, they don't believe in Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so what, what are they saying about it right now? Like the Jews that are... Uh, they don't make, they don't, sometimes they don't make any comment. You know, when the you Bible doesn't say much, anything? they keep silent. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when uh, you read in Isaiah, so many, so many verses that relate to Jesus, they will not say that. They will say, no, that's Israel. That's not a person. Mm -hmm. So they, they will not acknowledge that or remain silent. And you have that 400 years of silence between Old Testament and New Testament. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So. But that's during those years the was Maccabees. The, uh, the Maccabees and the uh, Antiochus Epiphanes. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> so that's good historical books because that did happen. Mm -hmm. So it's good reference. Anything else? No. The European Union curious to think, because that's all you can do is conjecture what 10 uh, countries it would be, because the European Union is like 17 countries now. I know, yeah. I know. So when they when there were only 10 countries, preachers at the time, they, mm -hmm. they were saying, now there are 10 countries, so then like the end is going to come soon. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, now there's growth there, now they're going to have to rearrange everything. So mm -hmm. I guess we're going to have to wait. So like you know, I said, it's all conjecture now. God is telling you, you know, nobody knows. No, just be okay? Ready. You know, just so keep doing your time routine time. daily. Keep doing. And uh, whether the rapture comes tomorrow or a thousand years from now, mm -hmm. you it's keep time. doing what you're doing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe the, the European Union, they realized it and they added more numbers. Like, let's Who not knows? <laughs> you know, the symbol is the Tower of Babel. So they are Antichrist. Uh, they don't believe in Christ. Yeah. They don't believe in that thing. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. okay, let me let me finish with this. <coughs> Let me finish with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here to study your word. Thank you for the revelation that you provide us. So many things that we did not know and some things that we did know, so we are reassured of uh, the veracity of your word. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us, for taking care of us in, in our daily lives. And let the rest of the day be a blessing to everybody in this church, and the rest of the week be a blessing to everybody that we know. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay.